Okay, good afternoon everyone. I'm Peg Rinning. I'm the chairman, CEO and founder of SGP Foods. SGP Foods is a resource efficiency technology company that develops proprietary technology and processes to combat the most pressing problems of climate change and food security. So I felt that the previous session was a very nice uh, lead up to my um, presentation and keynote today. Uh, it's good to have a bit of a preamble and preempt for our session today. Okay, so when we talk about food security, we, we have to, we have to uh, think about how it relates to the climate, right? Because when we talk about when we talk about climate change, we have to think about who is suffering from climate change. Is there a certain demographic that's suffering more from climate change than other? Are we approaching food security in a sustainable manner? Are we approaching food security in an equitable manner? And as you know, for climate change, be it in terms of uh, droughts, floods, or fires, it affects different parts of the globe differently. So uh, some, for some parts of the globe, people suffer directly from the livelihoods uh, in, the, in terms of their livelihoods. Uh, in other parts of the globe, the effects of climate change impact them in terms of the economic side of things. So when now we talk about things from the practical point of view, so you would have noticed over here, the keywords uh, in this uh, slide would be uh, both food security and climate change. So then we ask ourselves, how strong are the links between food security and climate change? And what exactly are the links between food security and climate change? Okay, this is a bit more about myself. I have um, experience across technology, business, research, and finance. Uh, I have a master's and bachelor's degree in technology related areas. And I also have a CFA certificate. So I'm able to approach things from various point of view and and you know, draw parallels uh, between different subject matters. Okay, so as you know, climate change and food security, they are very closely intertwined matters. Uh, perhaps by now you will have noticed uh, in my slide uh, that there is a logo up there. So what SGP stands for is actually, uh, SGP is in fact the UN country code for Singapore. Uh, my company is SGP Foods, so you can extrapolate uh, what it means from there. Uh, and our company name SGP Foods was in fact inspired by the COVID-19 situation. So if you could recall what happened back then in April 2020, right? What are some images that flashed through your mind for that period of time? Okay, so today's keynote, uh, I would like to uh, bring to attention what and help everyone understand what are some of the root causes of climate change to introduce some solutions for climate change, as well as uh, to help uh, everyone understand some ways that we can mitigate it. Okay, so let's go into the crux of the presentation. So what you will see over here in this slide would be what we term the food, energy, and water nexus. So the reason it is being put in this circle or it can be a triangle if you want to present it in another way, uh, is because there are very close links between the food sector, the water sector, as well as the energy sector. So how do all these link to one another? So we start with the food sector. The food, to, to produce food, as we all know, it requires clean water, right? And to produce clean water, we also require energy. So for example, in Singapore, where I come from, uh, a lot of our water comes from desalination, which is the production of clean water from seawater, from salt water, right? So this process requires a lot of energy. And of course, there are other ways to get water that requires energy as well. And then when we talk about the production of energy, there are, there are energy sources that come from food crops. There are energy sources that come from fossil fuel extraction. And these do actually affect food supplies. And then now when we talk about the food sector, the production of food, especially in urban environments, and that links to the, the previous uh, fireside chat, the production of food in urban environments require energy as well. 
Because like, for example, um, and there are some similar similarities between uh, Dubai where we are right now and uh, in Singapore, because um, in both Dubai and Singapore, we do see it uh, as a viable um, means of production of food in terms of food production indoors. Uh, for Singapore and Dubai, the reasons would be different, but we are actually looking at the same solutions. And um, so when we talk about food production indoors, we would actually require light energy, right? And the promise of growing indoors uh, means that, you know, we can grow food regardless of the climate because being indoors, uh, the environment can be climate controlled, right? So when you grow indoors and you, and you require light, uh, light uh, the production of light requires uh, energy sources as well. So, uh, and then you think about producing energy, definitely when you, the, the first thing that comes to mind are power plants and things like that. And these power plants require lots and lots of water. So this would uh, set the foundation of, you know, the whole link between climate change and food security. And then next, uh, I will go more into um, the sources of climate change, right? So in an ideal situation, uh, <coughs> we would like to have a good climate a good climate will result in good agricultural conditions, right? Because it means that now we don't have uh, extreme floods, extreme weather, uh, extreme drought or fires, you know. So when that is able, this uh, ideal scenario is able to happen, there are good agricultural conditions which would result in good yield of crops uh, in any part of, of the world. So then people are able to embark on efficient and ethical food production. Uh, together with efficient food production, there will be a reduced emission of greenhouse gases. And with less greenhouse gases in the environment, there will be good climate as well. Because uh, it is greenhouse gases that causes global warming and ex ex extreme global warming causes climate change. Okay, so now we look more into the overall distribution of greenhouse gases. So when we talk about greenhouse gases, it is not just one particular gas. It is not just uh, carbon dioxide. There are other greenhouse gases such as nitrous oxides, methane, and fluorinated gases. <clears throat> so of course, the gas that will stand out the most to us over here is carbon dioxide. But later I will share with everyone a fun fact about uh, carbon dioxide that would help us realize that carbon dioxide, even though it is a cause, it is not the largest cause of climate change. Okay, so you can take a look at the other gases first, and I'll come back to this slide later. Okay, and then we look at the overall sources of greenhouse gases. As you can see over here, the agriculture takes up 10%, commercial residential 13, industry 23, electricity 25, and transportation 29. Okay, uh, if you have these whole slides which you will have on YouTube, you can you know, retrieve my slides and uh, get more information from it. But let me continue with this uh, narrative. Okay, now we look, we zoom into agriculture greenhouse sources, right? Just now we look at various industries, but what I'll do today is I'll zoom into agriculture. So agricultural greenhouse gas sources, uh, as you can see over here, um, a lot of it comes from cropland soil. 12% uh, uh, comes from grassland soil, energy use, and there are other sources as well. And you'll notice that uh, the emissions that come from soil take up as much as 42%. And this is what my company, SGP Foods, is looking very deeply into, the soil part of things. Okay, uh, okay this is a very important slide. Okay, so if you remember from the very first pie chart, uh, we did look at various gases, including carbon dioxide, nitrous oxides, and methane. So now we'll zoom into nitrous oxides, right? Okay, so I would like to perhaps ask someone this question, okay? So when we talk about gases, you would have remembered in your chemistry classes in the past, right? There are heating effects of gases. So some gases are able to contain heat or trap heat more than others. And as you know, definitely carbon dioxide has a heating effect and together with our atmosphere, it traps heat in the earth. Okay, so my question is, uh, does anyone know what is the relative heating effect of nitrous oxides compared to carbon dioxide? Would anyone like to give a go at it? 
Okay, this gentleman in white over here, would you like to try? <laughs> okay, you can throw a number out. Let's, let's, uh, let's see where it is. Are you, would you like to give a go? <laughs> yeah. So, like uh, two times, you mean? Two times? Okay. Uh, thanks, thanks for the answer. So, okay, I'll go, I'm going to drop a, a number to you that will be very shocking, okay? So, the, the actual answer for this is, uh, in fact, 300, okay? Yeah, the heating effect of nitrous oxide is, in fact, 300 times than that of carbon dioxide. So, let's go back to this distribution, right? Uh, you, you will actually be able to do calculations. If we do 300 times of 7, right? Com that would be that would be two one zero zero percent, and that is twenty six times of eighty percent, which is the carbon dioxide. Which means that if we were to effectively combat climate change, right, we should be putting in twenty six times more effort to curb the emissions of nitrous oxides compared to carbon dioxide. And then, where does nitrous oxides come from, right? So we come back to this nitrous oxides mostly come from agriculture. So in fact, now, now you see, right, we get our food from agriculture, right? I mean, even if we talk about um, meat, uh, cattle also require food crops to survive and thrive. So the ultimate source of food is in fact agricultural lands and agricultural lands are producing so much gases that contribute towards climate change. Okay, so um, yeah, as you see, the stats are over here. And therefore, we should be putting in, I mean, as responsible citizens of the world, we would like to, we should be putting in 26 times more effort to curb the production of nitrous oxides uh, compared to that of carbon dioxide. Okay, so now I will start to uh, uh, explain more about what we can uh, do in the area of agriculture. Okay, so for example, what my company does, and I, I did uh, elaborate a bit about it just now, we look at the soil side of things because in terms of agriculture, uh, soil produce a lot of emissions. Uh, when, you talk, when you think about uh, open land agriculture, you think about the tilling of the soil, and then you think about, you know, some farmers, they move from plots of lands to plots of lands. But I think what we should really think about is how do we re restore and um, restore and and make the current soil that we are using suitable for the next few batches of farming, right? We shouldn't be going around spoiling Mother Earth and then, you know, not trying to restore what we used previously. Okay, so here at our company, SGP Foods, we look at both climate change and food security together and we develop solutions to achieve these goals in tandem. So we have open land agricultural projects that derive uh, the typical food crops like oil, flour, Fiber, but at the same time, what we do is we are able to generate carbon credits from this process as well. So uh, I wonder how familiar you are with carbon credits. You might have seen in the news that you know there are carbon exchanges uh, popping up in various parts of the world. So essentially, uh, we are able to generate carbon credits. Some people do it through growing trees, right? Some people uh, do it through um, more efficient ways of transport, right? So for example if uh, previously a certain person has been um, taking a, a, a plane uh, to travel between places, but now he or she chooses to take a train instead. So this person can actually generate carbon credits in this process. And carbon credits is a currency in some sense because they are actually exchanges that you know, facilitate the buying and selling of carbon credits. So what it means is that uh, carbon credits can be generated and sold by anyone that follows the process that is stated out by the UN to generate carbon credits. Okay, so we generate carbon credits through our open land agricultural projects. Uh, and in fact, you know, related to what uh, we talked a bit about just now, my company also does uh, high-tech indoor farming. Uh, so what it means is we are able to grow crops in climate controlled conditions. Uh, so that means that we are efficient on the, the water, the, the resources, we can supply just an optimal amount of uh, nutrients or, or water, and we can control the humidity, temperature, uh, and we grow vertically as well, because in Singapore, you know, we 
uh, Singapore is, is constrained by land space, right? So that's why a viable solution for us is to grow indoors and grow vertically upwards. Uh, yeah, so we have felt uh, patents for our solutions as well. Okay, so just some lovely food which you will have at lunch next. <laughs> okay, so I, I would like to, uh, at this point, um, you know, start to help everyone understand or inspire everyone to know that actually each and every one of us can contribute towards this movement of combating climate change and achieving food security, right? Uh, so, of course, this is more in terms of like if we were to start something, you know, build a community, start a company, you know, this is the thought process that we should be embarking on, right? We think about what are our skills, our experiences, our preferences, you know, and I think what's very important, um, which is in line with the, the spirit of my presentation today, uh, which is to understand before we solution, right? Because if we don't understand the root cause, we don't ask the right questions, we will not get the right answers or we will not be chancing upon the right information as well, right? So uh, asking the right questions in terms of, you know, talking to people or it could be even inputting the right keywords into Google search, right? I think you would have noticed by now, just a one word difference in your search would cause a vastly different result on the search engine. Okay, so we can in fact take a multifaceted approach towards uh, solutioning. So I mentioned we can start communities, we can start businesses, we can create plugins also, right? Some of us may be more techy than the others. So we can think about this whole ecosystem, which part of the ecosystem lacks someone developing solution for it, right? And I, I think this is a common theme today. You know, we, if we see a problem, we should think, what can we do to solve it rather than waiting for someone else to do it, okay? And then we can also create campaigns. We can also generate awareness. And we can also take an educational approach towards it. Okay, so there are several domains, right? And I believe everyone in this room comes from different backgrounds. So we can think about things from an innovation point of view, from a technology point of view, from a facilitation point of view, from an, interven from an intervention point of view, from a connectivity point of view, and from a creation point of view. And I, and I believe in this word cloud, uh, you would have your favorite keywords in this word cloud, depending on your preferences. Okay, so it's very important to understand, you know, as individuals, we always want to work with the assets that we have best. So we think about what our strengths are, what our vision is, and the vision is very important, right? To find the right people to be working with you. And uh, also what your interest is, because you must be happy with what you're doing and that is able to sustain you for the long term. Okay, so uh, this is actually my last slide. Um, you know, I think there's an online audience as well. So <laughs> yeah, I would encourage everyone to dream big. Okay, the world is our oyster. Uh, and I'm very excited to hear from everyone, you know, what, what you're going to share with us over the next two days and today. Thank you very much.